Assalamu alaikum and good afternoon. Welcome everyone to the Singo Shed Lecture Series number 24, brought to you from Lai Faculty of Engineering, University of Technology in Malaysia. My name is Amir Reza Nadripur and I am postdoctoral fellow at the Institute of High Voltage and High Current University of Technology in Malaysia. First of all, I would like to thank Professor Datu I.R. Muhammad Rafiq, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, and the Professor Zulkarnain Abdul Malik, the Director of the Institute of High Voltage and High Current, UTM, for supporting this lecture. For your information, distinguished lecture series, we invited prominent professors around the globe to share the knowledge, expertise, and experience, and perhaps to exchange ideas. Hence, it gives me great pleasure to invite our speaker today, Professor Joseph Guerrero from Institute Energy Technology, Albor University in Denmark. Prof. Joseph will deliver the lecture in the development renewable energy source at the microgrid today. So for those who know, Joseph is well-known professor in the field of the microgrid. It is my utmost pleasure to work at the collaborate for over 10 years with Prof. Joseph. Without any delay, I would like to invite Professor Mohammad Rafi, the Dean of the Faculty of Engineering, UTM, for further introduction to our speaker. Over to you, Prof. Thank you, Amir Reza. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to our 24th UTM Engineering Distinguished Lecture Series. My name is Mohammad Rafi, and I am the Dean of Engineering, University Technology, Malaysia. Today, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome Professor Joseph Guerrero from Aalborg University, Denmark. A bit about our presenter today. Joseph Guerrero received the Bachelor of Science degree in Telecommunications Engineering, the MS degree in Electronics Engineering, and the PhD degree in Power Electronics from the Technical University of Catalonia, Barcelona in 1997, 2000 and 2003 respectively. Since 2011, he has been a full professor with the Department of Energy Technology, Albok University, Denmark, where he is responsible for the microgrid research program. From 2014, he has been a chair professor with Shandong University, Jinan, China. From 2015, he has been a distinguished guest professor with Hunan University, Changsha, China. From 2016, he has been a visiting professor fellow with Aston University, Birmingham, UK, and a guest professor with the Nanjing University of Post and Telecommunications, Nanjing, China. He has authored or co-authored more than 500 journal papers in the fields of microgrids and renewable energy systems, which have been cited more than 30,000 times. He has notably contributed to the study on distributed power systems and microgrids, his research interests are oriented to different microgrid aspects, including power electronics, distributed energy storage systems, hierarchical and cooperative control, energy management systems, smart metering, and the Internet of Things for AC-DC microgrid clusters and islanded mini-grids, and more recently, specially focused on maritime microgrids for electrical ships, vessels, ferries, and seaports. Professor Guerrero is an associate editor for a number of IEEE journals. He was the recipient of the Best Paper Award of the IEEE Transactions on Energy Conversion from 2014 to 2015 and the Best Paper Prize of the IEEE PES in 2015. Furthermore, he was the recipient of the Best Paper Award of the Journal of Power Electronics in 2016. During five consecutive years, from 2014 to 2018, he was awarded by Thomson Reuters as highly recited researchers. So that is a biography of our speaker. Here now is Professor Joseph Guerrero from Aalborg University, Denmark, with a talk entitled Microgrids and Renewable Energy Systems. Professor Guerrero, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mohamed Rafiq, uh, for the introduction. And thanks also uh, to Amir Reza for also for his uh, invitation here. And uh, this is a, a good uh, moment for, for also celebrate these 10 years of uh, anniversary collaboration. Yeah. So I will start my speech here uh, talking a little bit about microgrids. And here is uh, the website of our center also, 
This is the Center for Research on Microgrids, which is inside the Energy Technology Department in Aalborg uh, University in Denmark. And uh, first of all, which is our motivation? Uh, our motivation here is like you may know that we have huge transmission power losses in the wall. So we are losing a lot of power just trying to transmit from one side to another. Uh, we have also very um, strong uh, targets like going to 100% renewable energies uh, in Denmark for the 2050. And even though the United Nations has been fixed uh, sustainable for development goals like having affordable and clean energy for everyone, still we have 2.7 billion people without electricity access in the world. Yeah, but at the same time, we can see how uh, solar uh, and photovoltaic uh, panels and batteries are becoming cheaper and, and cheaper and more reliable. And while also smart metering is taking place in many of our houses. And at the same time, we, we can see also how new electric appliances are appearing, such as, uh, for instance, electric vehicles. This is a picture of our members in our center. And, and we are here around 40, 50 people that are working all of them on different aspects of, of microgrids. So also thanks to our team, because they are also part of this presentation. And those are some of the laboratory facilities in our center. We have the Internet of Things Microgrid Laboratory, which is a demonstration house with real wind turbine and photovoltaic systems, and also a number of, uh, let's say, appliances that are also IoT connected inside this house. At the same time, we have also uh, microgrid and energy internet laboratories. And we have here down some maritime microgrid laboratories as well. All those laboratories, uh, we work with uh, simulations and then we compile it over a hardware in the loop system so we can test our ideas into real uh, equipment. Here we have a number of collaboration also with companies and universities. And this is also another picture you can see with the, those appliances that we are uh, controlling in that case is through some switches uh, using Zigbee. Uh, also regarding Zigbee, we are having as well a small a smart meter here. And this is sm a small smart meter. Uh, let us uh, measure the power coming from the wind turbine. And we have also here a, a little bit bigger smart meter. This is a three phase system smart meter. And it's the same that we have in our houses here in Denmark. So in that case, it comes from a company called Kamstrup in which we collaborate. That's another picture from our demo house as well. And here uh, you can see how we can monitor from those smart meters and uh, appliances, all the power, let's say the deliver, let's say this is the power uh, exchange in the, in the house, uh, between the house and the grid. And then we have also the wind turbine and all the appliances. Uh, as well, we have also temperature sensors, present, presential sensors, and, and so forth. And, but when we talk about smart metering, a lot of people think about electricity. Uh, in our case, this is not limited to electricity. We have also meters, smart meters for water, gas, district heating, and so forth. So we have been also developed a number of algorithms to also integrate all these things inside uh, concentrators. So here is how it, it looks like our lab with his, uh, its wind turbine uh, photovoltaic systems. And also uh, you can see here the, the heating floor systems as well, electric vehicle and the battery pack. Yeah, so that was the idea and we developed a lot of things in the lab. However, also after some years researching my grids, I also decided to become a customer just to try also myself all those things and uh, and to try to be coherent with my research also in my my daily life so that's why i uh i just installed photovoltaic systems in the roof this is around 2.4 kilowatt peak and uh, my car is an electric vehicle in that case i have 30 kilowatt hour a uh, battery system lithium ion 
And uh, here you can see I also installed an electric vehicle charger, which is 3.7 kilowatt. So it becomes the biggest, the biggest load in in my home. Yeah. So I was like a doctor taking your own your own pills. Yeah. And also talking about trying to be a doctor, I was looking inside artificial intelligence for microids also. And uh, I realized that we really don't know exactly how our brain works. Uh, we can consider that we have indeed three brains, uh, the main brain, let's say the mind, then uh, recent discoveries, uh, we have around 40,000 neurons also in the heart. And then in the gut, all this digestion part, we have around five, 500 million uh, neurons. So the same as the brain's cat. Yeah. So this is uh, very interesting because all these centers of uh, neural networks, it has a lot of parallelism with the chakras. And I think it's it's very interesting how this is well connected. Indeed, some institutes like the Health Math Institute, they are uh, trying to see what uh, how we can uh, synchronize our heart with the brains, let's say all the waves that are in the brain and the heart to be coherent uh, in order to to perform a better physical and mental uh, performance. So I think that's uh, very interesting because uh, right now you can see that there's much more uh, communication going from the heart to the brain than vice versa. And these explain a lot of things like what happened when I have feelings like love, uh, thankfulness, or even hate, how all these neural networks are affecting from the brain, from the heart to the brain, and how we can have incoherence when, have, when, when we have feelings that are not, let's say, aligned with the brain, and how when we feel incoherence, all these waveforms are, let's say, increasing and, and well sustained. But what is a microgrid? Indeed, a microgrid is a small grid system. It's a number of loads and distributed generation resources that can be placed all together. Yeah, this, this could be, for instance, photovoltaic generators, small wind turbines, battery systems, and loads that are uh, together in a, in a small place. This way, we avoid the use of huge transmission systems. Yeah. And the next question is, what kind of uh, current can we use? Uh, we have traditionally a lot of AC microgrid systems, but right now this is also appearing in many other applications. I will not say that one is better than the other. Uh, it's like sometimes, depending on the application, it's better go on AC, sometimes it's better go on DC. Yeah. So I will, I will show this a little bit uh, more later. And then another important thing is talking about the microgrid operation. Uh, the operation of the microgrid is basically uh, twofold. One is to be connected to the grid. So this way we can exchange power with the grid. And you can see this in many cases in uh, industrial applications, in applications also of commercial uh, places and even houses nowadays. However, if the grid is not present, what we can work is what we call islanded microgrid systems. So this is places that can be remote areas, uh, places in which the electricity is not there, or places in which naturally a uh, transmission cable cannot uh, arrive. And then uh, it's very interesting because even some grid connected uh, microgrids can turn into island if there is a, a grid failure. But of course, in order to control these things, we need a very complex systems. And we take those ideas from the big power systems in which we divide in several levels of control in order to have local controllers, which is what we call primary control. So it's controlling each of these resources. Secondary control, which is more an automatic control to adjust the references of our system and the tertiary control level, which is more connected to optimization or energy management systems. Yeah, we have been applied this to different frameworks and those are the main research frameworks that we use in our uh, center. 
One is more going to microid clusters, so it means that we can connect different microids uh, together to form a grid. So this is, for instance, imagine that you have a number of places in which you don't have electricity and you start installing microids. Then you could also interconnect those places and start to build the microgrid from bottom from a bottom up approach. The other is to have uh, more electric systems in maritime uh, systems. So it could be ships, it could be also ports. So that means that we want also to get rid of a lot of pollution on those uh, ships and ports. And this is also another important area here. You have to bear in mind that also a lot of uh, ferries are also going to full electric and ships going also to, to full or, uh, let's say, hybrid electric systems. So that's a very important area. The other area is uh, regarding uh, digital twins and Internet of Things. So we can see how the digitalization area is also coming to microgrids. And this is more to integrate more devices and to make a better optimization of our system in, um, let's say, in terms of energy, security, availability, and so forth. And finally, the other important area is the space. As you know, space is becoming more and more important. And, and we are also collaborating regarding space migrates. So energy is important, but I will show you also some other examples in, in space. The first example that I took is about uh electricity inside a ship so you can see how more and more uh, electric systems are coming inside the ships and i will say that is a similar process as we, we can see with electric vehicles so adding battery systems maybe still more uh, most of them having uh, diesel generators but electric motors are taking good place and power electronic systems as well so it becomes like a microgrid system embed inside uh, ships the other example we have of microgrids are uh, microgrids in nanosatellites. So small satellites needs, of course, for uh, energy or power. And this electricity is coming from photovoltaic systems. We store them in small battery systems. And then we distribute this electricity for small cameras, for instance, and communication systems. And all these sensors and electronics are working on DC. So that's a natural DC microgrid system. It's very exciting to see how on those, let's say, space systems, because you don't have conventional uh, generators, all of them are built on DC. So I will say that is a very interesting and area that, which is extending right now. Another interesting thing is that Many of our research that we have developed with small microgrid systems right now are extending also to big power systems. So, for instance, in the case of offshore wind farms, we are making also research to see how concepts that we developed for many years with small microgrids, like those primary, secondary, and tertiary controls, we can implement in our offshore wind in order to control voltage, frequency, and also harmonics in, let's say, local level, uh, what we call primary control, or in global level. So that means on the point of common coupling of our offshore uh, station, then we can use what we call secondary control. And even tertiary control levels could be also used to implement uh, virtual power plants in our uh, big power system. Also, those concepts that we've developed for many years in, let's say, electric microgrids, we are right now using in closed ecologic systems. This is a collaboration that we are doing together with the Universitat Autonoma of Barcelona. And it's basically how in a closed ecosystem, like those that you can see in, in our international uh, space platform or in the future, uh, lunar or Mars-based, we are going to really develop ecosystems from scratch. So we are using the same concepts uh, that we have used uh, for many years in um, in in, the, in microgrids 
to also control those uh, closed ecologic systems. So I will say that this is uh, the end for my presentation and just uh, one final uh, remark. Uh, that uh, sentence from Mahamadma Gandhi, you should be the change you wish to see in the world. Thank you very much for your attention. I don't know if there's some questions from the audience. Oh. Yeah, it seems that we are experiencing some technical problems. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I can see your comments now. So I don't know if someone wants to maybe type a question or something like that. Hello, Musaidi. Heavy metal forever. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, Joseph, for your amazing informatic lecture. So I believe we are learned a lot of uh, uh, from this lecture today. Let me inform all viewers from Malaysia and around the world. You are welcome to post any relevant question here. I will read the question from Facebook comment for uh, Prof. Joseph. So to kick a start question answer section, maybe I begin one question from me first. Uh, Prof, actually, uh, some research focus on to improve uh, the control method uh, of some compensation devices like the active power filter uh, to remove the harmonic in the system and microgrid system. But uh, some researcher like me supposed to focus on uh, improve the inverter control method, which is connected directly to the special generation source. Uh, we wanted to know uh, which one uh, is better, focus on the uh, grid connected inverter or uh, the control method on the active power filter. For example yeah that's a good question i will say that uh, both are very interesting i will say that when you have to develop a new system uh, your approach to having one converter uh, to act as active power filter inherently let's say when you are grid connected uh, that could have a lot of uh, good advantages so you don't need extra equipment but sometimes the situation is not like this uh, we have seen a lot of already existing, for instance, uh, photovoltaics uh, power plants that have uh, power quality issues. So then it's very good to have also a separate device that you could also connect there. And I will say not only because of this, 
but also separate device that could not only work as an active filter, but also provide energy storage capabilities that could be something extra that could be very interesting to, for instance, convert a photovoltaic system to a microgrid. So, so I will say that both are very interesting and, and there is a, a lack of those things in the market right now. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, thank you. I give uh, the question here. Okay, uh, we received one question from uh, Chetan Raj. Uh, hi, sir. It is expert microgrid. Uh, are you working on the drop control from converters? Yeah, thank you, Chetan. Uh, well, indeed, we use drop control if we have a number of, let's say, battery systems uh, connected to, to this space microgrid. As this is still not the case, we are basically don't use it uh, because we have, uh, for instance, in the case of satellites, only one battery pack. And uh, and then we have the, let's say, the photovoltaic system, which, which can be a number of converters, but all of them are putting the power inside the battery pack. So, so we are not using it. Uh, however, it can be very interesting uh, to see how, how we can develop this when we have a number of, of battery packs. So... Yeah, thanks for the question, Chetan. Regards. Uh, we are here. The next question. We are Lord and I, Kelly Prof. Uh, may I know, Prof, uh, how you manage uh, to develop an LOT uh, microgrid lab? Yes, uh, in the case of uh, the IoT microgrid lab, uh, we have uh, a number of people working on the on the computer science side. Let's say so. So basically, there's a, a postdoc which is fixed uh, inside the lab, and and he's programming all those things regarding uh, database systems and and our management system. So and then we have a number of devices. Uh, from a company here in Denmark that those devices are like uh, smart plugs and those are smart plugs. You can get all the information through Zigbee, like voltage, frequency, active, reactive power, just a small plug. I'm sorry because I, I didn't show any picture, but but uh, you can you can also see this in, in our website. And then we take all this information and and we put inside this, this uh, central com, uh, computer, let's say. So... That is the way that we manage. It's basically people that work more on the electric side and people that work more on the computer science side uh, together. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Yeah, uh, thank I you. I have one more question from uh, Hassan Kamyab. Uh, the question is, uh, what type of the energy should be developed in the future? Yeah, the cleanest as possible, I will say. Renewables, as much as possible. If we can, 100%. And be very clear and tough with this. And I think that as a technical people, we have to do it as much as possible in our lives, in our centers, in our homes, share with neighbors, talk with everyone about, about this possibility. If we believe this, then we can make this change possible. I am saying this because some people, uh, when they know that I install solar uh, photovoltaic systems in my roof, I have an electric vehicle, even they are also working in this field, they tell me that maybe I'm crazy. And I will say, yeah, I'm crazy. I think we have to all be crazy and go in this direction. Of course, thank you so much. Uh, maybe I have one more question. Uh, it said, may I know what is the current trend in the research of EMS in microgrid? Very good question. I think it's an amazing topic, uh, energy management system in microgrids, because as you know, we are living nowadays a tremendous uh, increase in knowledge when we talk about artificial intelligence. We are using a lot of things from the past, but right now, because we have very fast uh, devices that we never had before, we are able to perform 
amazing tasks with energy management systems. So I will say that if you go in the direction of machine learning, deep learning, you have a lot of things to do in energy management system. What we are doing is also using, for instance, the signals that are coming from the smart meters in order to know exactly which are the appliances you have connected, you know, like non-intrusive detection of what kind of loads and so on. So I will say that this, this is the, the main issue, going more to artificial intelligence. Thank you so much. One Thank more question. Uh, could you please discuss about the future trend uh, in this space, uh, in this related control uh, or uh, this kind of control appli uh, application of the microgrid? Yeah, very good question. Uh, some people think or believe that distributed control is better than uh, centralized control or whatever. I will say if we talk about distributed control, it's like having communication between them, but still having local controllers. And when we have a, a decentralized control means that you don't have any communication at all. Uh, I will say that decentralized control, uh, there's already a lot of things uh, done, but about distributed control, when it comes also to merge with centralized control, there's a lot of things to do, especially to decide which algorithms are going to be placed in our SCADA system or central controllers and which other algorithms could be in the distributed control. So maybe more simple uh, algorithms like automatic control could be placed in the distributed control level. And then in the centralized, maybe it's better that, that you have like, like uh, general microgrid things that you want to optimize. But I think that is amazing to see how you could uh, also merge distributed with centralized controller, which is really something much more uh, realistic. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Pass. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, I think due to limited time, we have yes. to finish this lecture. And uh, if the viewers uh, have more questions, can just email letter. Uh, I believe the Prof. Joseph is happy to answer all questions. Yes. So, uh, Prof, I really grateful and uh, honored for me to have the manager in this lecture today and uh, believe we against a lot today. Thank you again. And I am giving back to Prof. Rafi for closing remark. Over to you. Thank Prof. you very much. Okay, actually, I'm not Professor Rafi. I'm the Assistant Dean of Faculty of Engineering. So, yeah. Professor Rafi has something to do. So, thank you so much to Professor Joseph M. Guerrero on your very interesting talk on microgrid and renewable energy system. Thank you so much on behalf of Faculty of Engineering uh, for willing to spend your free time to share your thoughts and also expertise on this uh, particular area. So I believe our audience uh, has uh, gained so much information regarding the, these topics. And I believe this will be uh, another steps for both institutions to have more full collaborations in the future. Okay, so to all the audience, the viewers, thank you so much uh, for your time. And don't forget to like our Facebook. And you can also watch the recorded sessions if you want to uh, have better understandings on the a session uh, talked by the Prof. Joseph uh, M. Guerrero. So, Prof, thanks again. Have a nice day and goodbye. Okay, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Right. Good. Thank you.